All right, hey guys, my name is Angus. I'm a senior at ENVD, and today we're gonna to talk about how to set up your Rhino file for export into Lumion. And then once we get into Lumion, we're gonna talk about how to set up your materials so they look uh, as realistic as possible. And then uh, after that, we'll go into rendering and some tricks you can use with lighting and uh, setting up your composition to uh, have the best looking result possible. I'm not saying that Lumion gives the best renders uh, hands down. I'm just saying that if you want to mess around in Lumion and try and get a realistic looking result, uh, I'll show you how. But you know, there's many other ways you can render your projects uh, and sometimes realism is not the way to go. I'm also going to assume that you've used Rhino in the past and you've also used Lumion. So I'm not going to go over the absolute basics of both. Uh, we're just going to talk about how to work between the two and how you can uh, get better results in general. All right, one last thing before we get started. If you're wondering why my Rhino looks so strange, uh, it's because I'm using a custom viewport option that I downloaded from the internet and customized uh, to my liking. So I'll leave a, a way to download those in the description of this video in case you want to uh, have a better looking Rhino. Before you even get into Lumion, some stuff you can do inside of Rhino to increase your realism and the quality of your final image is just to add some surface details like this, how the window is raised from the wall, how the trim uh, is 3D, right? There's material diversity throughout the model. Uh, each plank is separated. There's a little bit of a gap between these metal panels. Stuff like this is really going to increase the quality of your final rendered uh, image. And it's also really important that uh, the detail in your model is pretty consistent throughout, right? There's not one area of this model that has more detail than the rest. It's a pretty standard level of detail throughout the whole thing. The most important thing you can do inside of Rhino before you export is to make sure that every Everything in your model that you want to be a separate material has its own layer and its own uh, color applied to it. So you might be wondering like, why is this blue? Why is this green? Why are these vertical pieces of wood? Why are they purple? And the reason for that is because I'm gonna apply a separate texture to each different one of these pieces of wood. Even though they're all wood, they are gonna have different grain patterns because they're, this one's at an angle, this one's vertical. And it would just look really strange if all of them had horizontal wood grain. Like that wouldn't look realistic at all, right? So it's pretty easy to set that up. See, I just have the two by eight verticals on their own layer, the two by eight angled ones. And yeah, everything just has a distinctive color. So Lumion understands that it should be a separate material. Next, we're gonna press control A to highlight everything. And then go over here to the properties tab, texture mapping and then click on apply box mapping. And then you'll see it uh, appear up here. Just press enter uh, three times. The defaults are fine for that. And this might not be 100% necessary, but I still like to do it just to guarantee that the materials will be applied correctly. All right, let's get into exporting. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is hide anything you don't wanna export. Uh, and secondly, just make sure your model is on the world origin right here. That's just going to make your life uh, much easier once you're inside of Lumion. So when it comes to actually saving your file out, uh, you could use the Lumion Live Sync plugin and click on this button, which will do the same thing we're about to do. It's just going to export a DAE. Uh, or you could press this play button and theoretically it would open up Lumion and any changes you make would show up you know, in real time inside of Lumion. But that feature hasn't always been that reliable for me and it's been a little bit glitchy. And you know, some people might not have a computer powerful enough to run Rhino and Lumion at the same time. So we're just gonna do it uh, a simple way without any plugins required. Just highlight everything with Control A, File, Export Selected, change the file type to Kalata.dae and save it out. All right, so got Lumion opened up. I'm running Lumion 10.3.2, the student version, which is free. And uh, yeah, let's just click on new, select model, find the one that you saved out. 
And then the forest environment should be fine for this. Uh, we can tweak it later. Okay, all the materials exported properly from Rhino. See, they're all grouped together based on their color. The first material that we're gonna talk about is the wood because there's a lot of it in this project and I think it's just a good place to start. So let's uh, do these horizontal ones first. Go over here to the materials tab. All right, so we have the horizontal wood selected. Let's go to outdoor and page three of the wood has some pretty good options. I actually like wood 33 a lot. So if you double click on it in here, it opens up a sub menu with all the adjustments that we wanna make. Now, uh, wood, it's not really gonna be glossy at all. So we can completely get rid of that. We can drop the reflectivity to somewhere around 0.4 because every material is gonna have at least some amount of reflectivity, even if it is rough. And yeah, you see these seams, don't really worry about those too much since we don't really see them from far away. Like we'll probably be looking at the project from this far and you can't see them from here. Yeah, if you look at the material in the light, you'll get a much better idea of how it's gonna uh, look in the end. So you can see, now that it's in the light, we can see how we uh, adjusted the relief here. See if we drop it, it gets much less contrasty right here because there's no shadows. But if we increase it, you see the contrast starts to increase because it's it's getting the divots in the wood and it's casting shadows inside of the divots. Um, now let's go to uh, the tab that's gonna make all your materials look much, much better. And that's the weathering tab, you know, Nothing in this world looks perfect. There's tons of chips and scuffs and scratches on all materials. So if we can simulate that even just a little bit inside of this program, we'll have a much better, more realistic image in the end. So the effect that we really do want to add to basically every single material we create inside of Lumion is even just a tiny little bit of edges can go a really long way into adding realism. So you see this edge right here. It, right now, it just looks really fake and, you know, nothing like this exists in the real world, something with this sharp of an edge. So if even if we just add just a tiny little bit, you can see it starts to look much more realistic. And it sort of blends all the edges together. So yeah, probably like 0.1 is good for this. So it still looks sharp, but it's not unrealistically sharp. All right, so in this case, I don't really want to increase the weathering too much because as you can see, it adds a lot of contrast into the wood, which doesn't really look that good from a distance. Uh, we kind of want all the wood to blend together and look like one object. So adding that much contrast is not a good idea for this. If you click on this button, save material to custom materials, uh, it'll show up in this menu, custom materials. And then when you click on, for example, these angled pieces right here and go to custom materials, it's right here. And then you can just click on it and apply it and then double click on it. And what we're gonna do is go to orientation and change the bank here in this case to uh, somewhere around 165. That seems to look about right. And for this one, I had to adjust the pitch for the deck wood, what I chose was wood 45. Um, it seems to look pretty good in this case. You know, if I was to redo this, I probably would make this bench right here a separate material um, because this doesn't look great at all. <laughs> this looks so weird. <laughs> but, you know, in this case, it's fine because we'll be looking at the project from back here and you won't really see it that much. So I'm not too worried about it, but you know, do that at your own discretion. And all I did was, I, I want this texture to look a little bit polished because it's something you might be walking on with bare feet. So there would be a little bit of a coating on it, right? So I think 0.5 glossiness uh, is about right. And 0.8 uh, reflectivity seems about good to me. We don't want to increase the relief too much because we want it to look a little bit smoother than this would. But still, if you go to weathering uh, and increase the edges just slightly, 
you can see right here is super obvious and it looks so much better even if you just increase it just a little bit see how it's catching the light right here looks so much better if you're wondering how i got the wood to align with the plank direction right here all i had to do was go over here to the orientation tab and change the heading to 90 degrees because what the heading does is rotate the texture around the y-axis so if you're looking down on it it's gonna rotate it like this see and rotating the pitch what that does is rotate around the x-axis and then the bank it rotates around the z we also want to change these uh 8x8 support logs into the same wood material that we already made so that's easy enough all we have to do is click on it go to the custom materials click on the wood texture we already made double click on it and we're going to adjust the orientation so they're vertical right because this this doesn't look right and how we're going to do that is just rotate all these settings make them all 90 it's gonna just rotate everything so it's vertical. Okay, so I've been trying to figure out what material would look best here. And I do, I kind of want something like this, you know, like a stainless steel. Um, but I also really, I want panels on this thing. You know, I don't want it to just be one sheet of metal. That, that doesn't look real at all. Um, but unfortunately, there's not really anything like that inside of Lumion. Uh, there's not really any metal panels. So maybe there is, you know, you could maybe use one of these, but this doesn't look, this is not what I'm going for. You know, I, I want something like this, but with, with sheets on it. So this is a good opportunity to talk about how we can import custom materials. And all you have to do is, you know, double click on the material, choose the color map. I already got this. So yeah, just open that up, bam. And then, you know, if you have the normal map to go with it, use that as well. Yeah, I'm just gonna adjust the uh, the offset here so it lines up with the edge. Adjust the Y offset so it lines up in the corner here and the Z offset. Yeah, and what we're gonna do is decrease the reflectivity quite a bit and decrease the gloss because I want it to look like a matte metal texture. This is kind of what I'm going for. Yeah. And we also want to add the edge smoothing. Just a little bit of that is gonna go a long way. Just 0.1 is good. Um, and we can also mess around with the weathering. So if we go to Iron for this is probably good. You know, there's not really a steel option that does not look right because iron is is rusting. So let's try uh, let's try silver. And you see, weathering is a really uh, interesting effect because it takes into account the other geometry next to it. So you can see it's getting this really really nice look right here. You see how it's it's weathering around the edges. Oh, it's so interesting how it does that. And it looks so good. So we can honestly leave it there. This looks pretty nice. Looks very natural. Uh, yeah, that's exactly what I was going for. I want to make the borders around the windows and the doors, and I want these columns to match this, but obviously they shouldn't be metal panels, right? They should be a solid like metal material. So we'll just go back. And uh, we'll just choose this one again, the stainless steel cast. Just click here, outdoor, metal, page three, stainless steel cast. And let's double click on that, change the reflectivity. Let's drop that, drop the gloss down. So we don't need that. Boost the edges just uh, a little bit. Maybe we can go heavier this time. And we can also, go back to silver and uh, adjust the weathering just a little bit to add some extra detail and you see how it's getting in this crevice right here so yeah this is looking uh, pretty realistic it looks like welded together weathered 
and uh, it's the right amount of reflectiveness. So this whole part right here is looking really nice together, looking very realistic. And then we'll just do the same thing. Uh, we'll just copy this material. We'll save it to the custom materials. Uh, it doesn't matter what the name is. And just click on the trim right here and go to custom and then click here. And boom, we're done with that. And we're making really good progress right now. Like this is almost done. All right, here's another good opportunity to talk about how we can get the outcome that we want from Lumion, even if it might not have the right material that we that we want, uh, we can just import our own, you know? And an easy way to do that is go in Google and find a, a texture that you like, something that you want. I want this to be rammed earth. So there is nothing like that in Lumion. So we gotta go to good old Google and just save this image. Um, Rammed Earth Texture 3, perfect. Now we can just uh, choose the color map. Boom. Easy. Remove the old normal map uh, that we don't need. Just click that twice. And then Lumion's pretty nice because it can just create a normal map from the color map. If you click on that, you can see we have some nice texture going on here. It's looking pretty nice. It's way too glossy though. And it's looking a little bit small right now. You can really see the texture tiling right here. Look at that horrible seam. Um, so how we can fix that is just increase the scale. You know, rammed earth is usually at this, like about this scale. Like right, right there. That looks about right. Yeah. And an easy way to tell is just, you know, look at some reference images. You can easily tell what scale it should be at. Yep, this looks pretty good. And you can still see that the edges, the edges of this are not that realistic. So we'll just increase the edge softening here to around like 0.3. And then stone weathering is good. We'll just increase that just slightly and increase it to around 0.3 where you can start to see this line appear. That's like edge wearing. And you can start to see it gets darker where it starts meeting the deck, which is nice. And yeah, so I think right, right around here at 0.3, this looks the best. But if you go too far, obviously this looks really bad. So you do really don't want to overdo this just a tiny little bit. And that looks really good from a distance. Yeah, that looks amazing. So you might be thinking to yourself, wow, this looks horrible. You know, why'd you choose this blue brick color for this exterior that, you know, this looks like the interior of a Starbucks. Um, well, you know, it's just a placeholder, so <laughs> we'll change it later. And that's the good thing about Lumion, you know, you can just mess around and see what looks good, see what doesn't. This is kind of what I'm trying to go for. Uh, but I want it to be, you know, like a silver color, right? I don't want it to be red like this. Although this does look kind of interesting. This doesn't look too bad. So yeah, what I really want for this roof material is like a corrugated metal type of look. And there's nothing really like that exactly in Lumion. And you know, if you look hard enough online, you can find some of this stuff. Um, and I was lucky enough to find a siding material with a normal map and a displacement map, which means that we'll have some nice uh, 3D depth to it. Yeah, just... Uh, so go through and, you know, load up the uh, correct material. Just want a tiny little bit of gloss. Reflectivity can be pretty high for this. And we'll just increase that scale to more realistic scale as well. 
fix that up and change the edges. Just make those like 0.2. That looks pretty good. So one thing I forgot to do for the roof material is uh, increase this displacement value because we have this displacement map in there. It's going to tell uh, Lumion like what should be higher up, what should be lower down based on the black and white values. So if it's white, it should be higher up. Black is like a crevice. So we'll just increase that displacement. So you can see, you can actually start to see those uh, details right here. Looking really nice. And we'll also just uh, increase the colorization. We'll make this like a gray, because this is the color I want it to be. So we'll just increase that just just a little bit to make it a little bit brighter. Yeah, so that's looking a lot, a lot better. And if you really wanted it to look good, you would just model it inside of Rhino. You'd have the ridges all modeled, you know, physically inside of Rhino. And it would look really nice, but I don't really want to do that. So we're just going with this option. <laughs> I do want to adjust this material, though. We could probably find a better one. In Lumion 10, they added displacement textures from polygons. So we can just use those and they look really nice. You see all the bricks are like physically coming off the wall. Whereas with this one that doesn't have displacement, you can tell it's kind of just a flat texture, but the displacement one looks really, really nice. And last thing I'm going to do is just change the foundation here. I'm just going to make that a concrete, just a standard concrete in case we see that in one of the renders. So yeah, I'm a pretty big fan of this board form concrete, except I do want it to be facing the other direction. I want it to be horizontal. So we'll just change the orientation. And there we go. Perfect. What I decided to go with in the end was a nice brown, like a dark brown industrial brick look, because it's a nice contrast to the roof and the wood and the rammed earth. Uh, and it goes really well with the black details that we have going on here. So now let's get to my favorite part of this whole process. Let's go to the photo mode. And since we loaded up the forest scene, there's already some pre-made camera angles here. So yeah, we can use one of these. We can use this and just move the camera over to like about here. I think this looks pretty nice. I like this tree in the foreground. Get a little bit closer. And then let's just put it at eye level and set it horizontal to eye level. Uh, and then tilt it up just slightly. And what we can actually do is, is move the camera back and then change the focal length. So it's a little bit more zoomed in. Um, I just want that building like taking up more of the frame. And yeah, this looks really good. I like this tree in the foreground, nice detail. And the house looks good. The only thing I'll change now is go to real skies and change the heading. Uh, changing the heading is gonna change uh, where the sun is in the sky. It's just basically rotating the sky texture. So I think right, right here, this is really good because you can see all the brick details getting like shadows, so is the rammed earth, so is the wood. Uh, everything just looks super nice in this lighting. And that's what you really want to find. You just want to see like where the sun is hitting your textures and uh, detail the best uh, and where it's like highlighting uh, details that you want highlighted, right? Um, and with Lumion 10, it's nice because you can just click in the viewport anywhere and it does a preview render. Um, that looks pretty nice. You can really see that detail and the materials that we added, and it looks super nice. Uh, but it's really, really dark here, so uh, we might have to change the sun position. Or we could just uh, make it a little bit brighter overall. All right, so I really like this camera angle. It shows off the building really well. Uh, the, also the, the sun heading position looks good here because it's shining down here. You get nice highlights on the roof. So it shows off this nice little contrast here. 
you see all the texture detail and there's this nice beam of light coming through where you see that brick yeah so just uh, keep messing around with it and you'll eventually get something that looks good once you render it you're definitely going to notice some stuff that you should change and that's a good thing you know that's where all the quality comes from is just adjusting and readjusting and readjusting and adjusting some more go back into build mode and i don't really like the uh how much you know how much texture how much relief the wood has so we'll just drop that down to like one i think is good and same thing with the rammed earth too much relief going on there like rammed earth should be smoother than that um, and now if we go back into the render mode click on our little camera we made and re-render it yeah that looks way better now the rammed earth looks more realistic so does the wood easy enough so for the final phase of this process i know it's been a long a long process but we're almost done uh the final phase is landscaping and this is what's really gonna set your render apart from the rest and i, I want that tree back that we had before like i want uh, a little tree in the corner here just have you know something in the foreground to like balance and uh just make the image more interesting like i want some stuff going on in the foreground so uh, let's go back into build mode and find that tree that we had before this guy right here. Um, and we could just move it up a little bit. Or something that would probably be easier to do is just go into object mode, uh, select, and then imported models so we can move our model. And then let's just move it up. Let's just move it here. So yeah, you can really see how much this foreground element does for our render. It just adds so much depth, you know? And don't worry about this texture. It'll fix itself once we click render. Um, but yeah, just, you know, having this rock and this little bush here, this little grass bits, this little fallen leaves, the patches in the grass, and this tree, you know, arching over and sort of like framing our house. It just, uh, it just adds so much to the render, you know, um, having a, a foreground, middle ground and background. And you can do that in any setting, you know, even if you're in like a city setting, you can add foreground, like a car or a person or something. Um, you know, stuff like that. Just uh, think about adding foreground. But you know, you don't want to make it bright, right? Like the foreground should be dark. It should be like in the shadows because you don't want to draw attention to it. You just want it to be there and to draw, you want it to complement uh, what you're trying to render. You know, it's not supposed to take attention away from what you're trying to render. It's supposed to draw your attention here. It's looking kind of weird over here. You know, like I want some grass in here, some more grass. So let's go back to build. And if you go to the landscape tool, then click on this grass here, then we can just paint more grass in. And you know, when have you ever seen a landscape that's this flat, right? We, we want to add some uh, variation in the height. So we can go to the height tool and just increase the brush size and decrease the brush speed which is going to adjust like how fast it changes the landscape. So we just want very subtle adjustments. You know, we're not trying to build a mountain here. We just want little subtle uh, variations in the ground level. Yeah. So just start, you know, raising up the background a little bit. You can get much taller here. So I just want some like gentle sloping hills, you know, and it's pretty nice because the trees adjust automatically to be on level with the ground. Just subtle little adjustments like this are going to add a ton of realism. See the, the hills sort of like flowing around in the distance. This looks much, much better already. 
All right, so right about now you might be thinking, Angus, why is this random cabin in the middle of an open field with nothing around it, no people, no roads, no electricity? Well, my answer to that is don't worry about it. It's just for for an example. <laughs> you know, if I was actually doing this for a project, I'd put it in the site. So looking at this again, I don't really like the lighting that we have going on here. So I'm going to change the skybox to something like cloudy five this could be good and you can see it really does change the feel of the render a lot so you can experiment with the the real skies textures you can experiment with them a lot and you can get really really different results Okay, and just making some final adjustments, uh, we can add depth of field to this. And with the realistic uh, preset, it's already there. You just have to click uh, the enable and then click here. And then just make the amount pretty high so you can tell obviously like where it's focusing at. And then change the focus distance to where your model is. Because every camera in the real world is going to have some amount of depth of field, even if it's just a tiny little bit. So let's render this out. As you can see, the print version looks really, really nice. And it didn't take that long at all, only 49 seconds. Um, and you can see the trees in the background look better. Uh, all the lighting looks smoother. The shadows are crisper. The textures look more realistic. But there's one thing that we have to change still, and that's this reflection. This reflection doesn't make any sense at all. It's so blurry and pixelated and white. Why, why is it? Why is it like that? So what we can do to fix that weird reflection is. Go out here to the, you know, it's already unrealistic, so it has the reflection effect already applied to it. But we can click on it and then edit reflection planes. So click that. And then you can add a reflection plane. And let's add it on that window right there. So you just click on the window. And then we'll also add another one for the door. And then we'll also add one for this window. So yeah, you just want to do that for any reflective objects in your scene. And it's going to make the reflections look so much better, so much better. You really want to do this. All right, and yeah, now the reflections look way more realistic. You know, uh, you can see sort of the tree reflections in this window and this, you can see a little bit of the sky, but realistically, this window would be black because it's it's in the shade. Uh, there's not really anything for it to reflect. Um, same thing here, like all the, everything just looks uh, way more realistic.
This is the final product. I think it turned out really nice in the end. So hopefully now you can see just how many times I like to go back and re-render and then change one thing and re-render again and then keep doing that until, you know, we get here where I don't see anything wrong with this. It just takes a long time, a lot of trial and error. So some changes that I made since the last time I talked to you, I increased the brightness quite a bit because the image was really dark with this uh, Real Skies texture I have in. and. I really want this image to seem like bright and airy and cheery. I didn't really want it to be all moody and dramatic. So increasing the brightness there is going to help a lot. And then to balance out that increase in brightness, you kind of have to increase the contrast just a little bit. Other things I did, uh, obviously I changed the real sky. I also increased the skylight render quality to ultra and turn both of these on and increase the brightness of that. And I increased hyperlight to 46.9%. So that's about it. I hope you learned something new and have a great day. Bye.